Hey, Brandon. Hey, congratulations on Z. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been exciting. I've checked, I've checked it out. It gives me chills. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me where the original idea came from for Z. Um, after my first film, Stillborn, which deals with a mother and a baby, uh, I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And, um, our oldest son, he was around six at the time and he had just started going to kindergarten. So it was kind of the first time in our lives as parents where we were letting our kid out into the world and we were no longer kind of in charge of what he was you know, intaking and what he was learning and all those things. And so he would come home and he would have these new ideas and thoughts and drawings and all these things that was just like, you know, there's kind of that, that cue like, Oh, look what he made. Let's put it up on the fridge. But then we started to have this discussion, like, you know, like, what if something bad were to happen from this? You know, what if he learned something bad from a kid or what if, you know, the teacher taught him something we didn't approve or what if, you know, for example, he brought home a demonic entity. Um, so we were like, you know, we started talking about this idea of just like, you know, what, what, what could that be? Cause it sounds like a fun, creepy kid kind of movie. And then my wife threw out the idea of an imaginary friend and uh, she had a friend whose kid was going through that. And so she had some inspiration from there, I'm sure. But we, we just sort of had this conversation back and forth, like, like, you know, that's really interesting. It was kind of like a lightning bulb moment. And we were just sort of, we're throwing ideas back and forth. And, you know, that was kind of where, where he was born. You know, um, I didn't, I didn't watch Stillborn, but um, I just saw the trailer and the, the style and stories nearly similar. It's, it's about a mother, you know, and a, and a mm -hmm. child and, and maybe a, like a creature and so on. Could you, could you talk about how you try to make Z a little bit different from that? Um, I think I think Z is a more mature story. Stillborn is a little bit simpler, where it is just like a very basic, like mother protecting baby. Whereas I think with Z, a lot there's a lot more layers in the storytelling and in the characters themselves because there is so much history that we're exploring. I mean, it's not like we deep dive into it, but I think we give enough of a hint as to what's going on there. Where um, you know, all of a sudden we've got uh, you know. Beth's past that we need to look into so you start and it's a very simple story setup it's like a little boy he has an imaginary friend and it's kind of tormenting the parents but then all of a sudden um you you explore why it's doing it and why all this stuff is happening and I think that's where the depth of the story comes out whereas uh, Stillborn was just a lot simpler is much more streamlined I guess um so I think just having that and having you know actors that were much older and just more you know there's just a lot more maturity on screen I feel like which was which was a lot of fun just because you have that there's a sense of history and place and and stuff that you get out of their performances in Z. The other similarity I noticed with with Stillborn is your writing partner Colin Minahan, mm -hmm. who uh, who I had the pleasure of interviewing years ago when he was part of, he was part of that duo the Vicious Brothers. Um, yeah. Could you could you talk talk about working with him again and how 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 is it such a delight? Uh, yeah, so back in 2015, he had a script called "It Stains the Sands Red" that him and the Vicious Brother uh, Stuart Ortiz they they were they wrote together. And uh, it took place in the desert and I live in Las Vegas and I was kind of like, you know, we had been friends for a long time, but we'd never worked together in any real capacity. So this was kind of like a leap of faith moment for me where I was like, you know, I've been a fan of theirs forever. We've been friends for years. Um, but I was just like, why don't we just do this in Vegas? Like, why don't we just drop everything and kind of do it? Like, I'll, you know, I'll take some time off working on stuff and I'll, I'll just sort of help you guys produce this thing. And I just sort of went out and we, we scouted all these locations and it, it was just kind of really apparent right away that we're like, oh, this is like, this is something that we can do. We can do it cheaply and we can just sort of make this thing. So um, that was really kind of fortuitous because after that, it was, uh, you know, Colin and was in post-production on that and he kind of just said, Brandon, what, what would you like to do? And, uh, you know, we started talking about different ideas and Stillborn was born from those conversations. And, you know, we kind of, we got to learn a lot on that film, just sort of how to work together. You know, Colin's, uh, he's, you know, super diligent about writing. He's very, you know, wants to write, 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 which was good. Cause I was, I was definitely lazier back then where I could spend some time doing it. And then, and then, you know, it would just, nothing would you know, you write 10 pages and then you bail on it for a year. So um, it was good to kind of learn, learn his, uh, his work ethic and stuff. And then on Z, my wife and I actually wrote the first draft. And uh, after that, Colin came on board and we had that familiarity where we, able, where we were able to just sort of like jump into each other's brains immediately and just start the dialogues and, and, and write the, you know, the, 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 the successive drafts after the first. 
with with both films under your belt, uh, are are you more attracted to like supernatural horror films, or you or is this is just a this is just a start for you in your directing career? Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of like James Wan and you know Mike Flanagan and those guys. They're doing a lot of superna supernatural stuff, but um, I think that the supernatural was just a nice way to tell pretty simple stories about mothers and their kids. You know, you can kind of there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, ability to be vague about certain certain things and allow allow the material to kind of take on a different life where it's more it's it's not just about the supernatural. It's about more than that. You know, you can dive into to themes like mental illness or trauma or things like that, and uh, you're kind of just using supernatural uh, you know, the supernatural to kind of uh, go into that, and that's kind of like your precursor into it. Um, I, I don't necessarily think I'll always be there, but it is a lot of fun to kind of play with and just like uh, mess with audience expectations and stuff like that. Um, but I, you know, if, if I get away with it on my next one, I, I would definitely like to go back into that world because it is really fun to just, it's very creative and imaginary, which, uh, you know, is part of just making horror films is just having fun. Absolutely. How, how did you come up with the name Z for, um, for the title of the movie? Well, for the creature and, and, and so on, because it's so, how can you say, simplistic yeah. and, and straightforward. Uh, that It's funny because it was like the very first conversation I had with my wife, we were talking and we were just like, well, what is the, or no, we didn't know that then. We were like, well, what is it? What's the imaginary friend's name? What is it like? And it was just like, let's just attach a variable to it right now and we'll come back to this conversation later. So it was like, you know, X, Y, Z, and we just sort of threw Z on it. And then that night I was up and I was just jotting ideas down on Google Docs and I was just like, I just kept thinking Z, just the single letter. And I was just like, what, you know, there's just something kind of evocative about it where it's just like, it's just kind of creepy when you have it repeat like that. And that, that repeating motif was what led to the alphabet game, you know, where you're able to actually, you know, you hear it saying Z, Z, Z. And it just, it just, there was just something so simple and innocent about it, but at the same time, super creepy. And so it just kind of, you know, a day into the process, it, that was the name and it was just never anything else. Let's talk about your cast. I mean, your your, your main star was uh, Keegan Connor uh, Tracy. Um, could, mm -hmm. could, you, could you talk about her, why she was perfect for the uh, motherly role? Uh, we were, you know, it's always tough to cast an independent film like this because you don't have money to really attract, you know, big names and stars and all that stuff like that. So you're, you're leaning on relationships and people that you know that can recommend people. And uh, I reached out to a uh, casting director in Vancouver, Tiffany Mack, who helped us cast uh, Stillborn. And I just said, hey, look, we, don't, we can't do a casting call on this. We don't have any money. Do you know anybody that could play, you know, a uh, late 30s early 40s mother that's just sort of at her wits end and she she suggested uh keegan connor tracy and sent us some audition tapes that she had done for her recently and uh you know th that's the kind of relationship where we got an actor like keegan we were able to get her information and send her the script and she you know she she dug it and i think she found something in it that you know kind of spoke to her personally and so she jumped on board and it was it was exciting because like that that's just another case of someone that we wouldn't be able to get normally you know through the traditional means so we were able to to just sort of cheat our way through and, and get to her and uh yeah luckily she she enjoyed it and she she watched some of stillborn which uh, she enjoyed so it was uh yeah, it was lucky because she brings just like a wealth of experience to this you know to the film you know she's got kids of her own which she was able to draw on and she's you know, she's got a degree in social, like psych, psycho, psychology or one of those things. So okay. she, she had a lot of input on certain things that, you know, help benefit the film itself. So, you know, you're always looking for that. Directing is 90% casting. So um, when you have someone like that, that can just come and bring it, it makes my job so much easier. <laughs> well, I, in, in, in the film business, uh, working with kids is always tough. Could you talk about, uh, how how you managed to uh, re recruit the boy and i believe his name was is jet klein yeah. is that right yeah jet klein yeah so that was kind of the biggest fear going when we were writing it it's like how much of this film can we put on this little kid's shoulders you know cuz um you know a ki ki creepy kid films they put you know you're used to like macaulay culkin and elijah wood as being kind of the the prototype kid actors but those are very very few and far between so um 
we were we were really hesitant to sort of put out that casting call and we just before we even did any sort of search for it we just put out a general casting call feeler thing on facebook to people around the area that we were shooting in and like literally 30 minutes later we got a call uh, an email from jet's mom just saying hey this is my son jet we would love to have you consider him for the role of josh and z and we get this headshot really cute kid and we look at his resume and we're just like what the hell? This kid's done more work than I have. You know, he's like got a laundry list of credits back to when he was like a baby. Like he was literally a Gerber baby. So he, you know, there was that fear of just like bringing on a kid and you had to be very careful and wear kid gloves when you're dealing with him. But immediately when he came on set, it was just like, Oh wow, this isn't, this isn't a child actor. It's an actor, you know? So you could give him notes. You could just talk to him like he was, you know, a professional working actor and he totally got it. So, I mean, there, there was the challenges of when you had to shoot late into the night, you know, like after 12 o'clock, he started to go into a nine year old boy problems where he's tired and whiny and stuff like that. But you know, for that, that's such a short period compared to the rest of the time we spent with him. But yeah, I mean, it, considering it was just a Facebook post that led us to casting the most important role of the film it, immediately when we started our process. So it was crazy lucky. <laughs> Could you could you talk about the challenges of uh, filming in the dark? Because you you know like a lot of you, you can never escape filming in the dark, especially for supernatural horror films. And 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 you did it this perfectly. It was probably the experience that for your second feature. Uh, yeah, I mean it's always tough to figure out how much you can show in the dark because I mean if you think about it in real life, you hear a noise, you're going to start turning on lights but that's not very scary. So a lot of the time you, that's like part of the suspension of disbelief is you're going to have these characters hearing a noise in the night and they're going to explore it in the dark, <laughs> which to, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Sometimes they'll have a flashlight, but in general you want to keep it dark and scary because you want that audience to be on the edge. And I mean, you can use lights in a way where you kind of, if you kind of go from light to dark, I mean, lights out did it great, but, um, in general, it, it, dark is scary. And so it's actually fun to kind of play off that. And when you're in the daytime, which is usually like the safe period of, you know, the day um, to kind of twist on that too, because when a lot of the bad stuff in this film happens during the day, it kind of makes you feel like as an audience uh, that the characters are never safe. So um, yeah, I mean, dark is always fun. It's, 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 it's fun to just sort of have the ability to hide things in the shadows and stuff but i think the true scare is when you can do it in the daytime when you're kind of you're at your most vulnerable that which which transition into the into z itself because you how how did you manage to come up with that look or their artwork for z and how did you manage to create sort of like that transition to see it z like it you know in, in the dark or you know which was probably was pretty difficult by itself um yeah so the biggest thing is always like well what's it going to look like you know if you're in hollywood you're going to have concept artists that are that are drawing 30 drawings for you and you can go i like that one let's do it and then the costume department goes to work the creature department goes to work whereas with us it's like brandon what do you want this thing to look like and you're just like scary i don't know <laughs> you know so it's like you're trying to figure out how to make something unique and scary that will uh that works for this the, the movie and so you look at references like the Babadook and that, that went the complete opposite direction. It has a very theatrical look. He's got the, like the hat, he's got the cape, he's got that silhouette that, you know, you just, you can see it and you can see artwork of it. And it's very, very iconic. And uh, it's scary to kind of compete with that. So you kind of go in the opposite direction and instead of all these clothes and stuff, you just strip it all off. And the one kind of marker that we had was just a, a smile because the, the trouble we have here is that this kid needs to not be afraid of this thing. So um, similar to like clowns, when you look at a clown when you're a kid, typically that you can just sort of see past that creepy cracks in the makeup and all that stuff. You're just able to see, oh, it's this lighthearted, fun thing that wants to make me laugh. But when you look at it as a parent, you're just like, there's this weird lens that you're staring at it through where you're just like, that's terrifying. And so I think with Z, it was the same thing where it's like, we've got this thing that has a big Joker-like smile and... Uh, that's great for the kid but when the mom starts to see it it's there's there's something off about it it's not as cute as it is maybe to josh so that was the big thing was just having something with a big smile so that it could trick josh into playing with it so it could eventually do what it needed to do i was really uh um, amazed that uh use conventional toys for, for for the kid because you you know the younger generation now these days they all have like electronics and right. play with the cell phone that so it, could possibly tempt tempting, but you went the other route with the convention 
conventional toys with, with the, especially the the alphabet machine that uh, that you actually utilize which was perfect <laughs> talk about doing that yeah i mean when you think about you you have a character with history like z um you don't want to trap it in kind of the modern day technology and stuff like that it makes sense for it to be more you know to have more attachments to things that were in beth's childhood like the alphabet toy which is actually just beside me over here um but uh yeah i mean it, it's there's just something really creepy about old old toys that light up and they talk and they do these things that you can kind of play with i mean there's the one scene in particular that you're probably referring to where there's you know the, the alphabet game and we we always referred to it as the ouija board scene because it's kind of like if you're if you're a kids movie or you're you know a, a monster that's affecting kids how are you going to communicate with with humans and that's you know using a child's toy just made a lot of sense so it uh, it was it was really fun to kind of come up with those things like i mean if you're a parent and you're watching this film toys going off in the middle of the night is not something unusual you know they go off all the time and it's just like oh a, a toy slipped and it hit a button or something like that it'll stop in a second so it's kind of taking the what if of that it's like well what if something's trying to communicate with me through that toy and that's kind of like the 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 path we took there and it's it's really fun to kind of play with that i do think you know modern technology like cell phones it makes it very hard to be scary because they're there's such amazing tools that they can solve virtually any problem like oh my god what is this foreign thing i found oh i'll google it it's like oh no i'm stuck in the middle of nowhere i'll just call someone you know it's just it's such an easy device that most movies have to get rid of it so they can be scary um and then you have films like host that just came out that uses zoom technology as the base of its fear which is great it's really fun <laughs> yeah the um you know, I've I've watched so many uh, horror movies, supernatural horror movies, and um, and your your yours not the only one, but that that I actually noticed that bad things always happens to good families in big homes. <laughs> 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 Could you talk about the uh, production set for for this film? Um, yeah, I mean, a big part of that is just like you want to have the space to maneuver, and you, I mean, if you're going to spend the majority of your film in one location you need to have some space to put it in. Like if you've just got like a two bedroom apart apartment or one bed, it's going to get really boring fast unless you're, you know, a, a whiz dialogue writer, like, like Richard Linklater or something like that. Um, but uh, you know, you want to have a lot of nooks and crannies to explore. You want to have a lot of texture that you can kind of dive into. Uh, so having a big space like that is scary. I mean, I, I think that one of the nice things, like I was saying before about daytime scares is just, your home is supposed to be your most safe spot, you know? So if you can perverse that experience of being home and all of a sudden make the one place that you should feel safe, feel not safe. I think that's really powerful because I think anyone can, you know, even when you're in, in bed at night or something like that and you get that, you go down that train of thought of things that could happen. Uh, you can sometimes not feel very safe and there's something really powerful in that. So I think that's just, that's part of the reason why people do this is the, the idea of something coming for you in your place, where you should be safest is is super scary to me. Excellent. Well, let, let me start wrapping things up with you because I know I've taken a lot of your time. Um, it's a silly question to ask, especially during times like this, but how are you staying creative and uh, moving towards your future projects? Uh, well, in the beginning of quarantine, I was definitely not creative. There was like a, a full month where you're basically glued to the news and watching the numbers and doing all that stuff and just kind of losing yourself into this like vacuum of bad news. Um, and then I had to eventually pull myself out of it because I was just like, this isn't healthy for anybody. Um, and so uh, I was able to, you know, I've got a lot of camera gear and stuff like that at home. And I was able to shoot some short films with my kids, which was really fun. Just some really short horror things. Um, which was which was cool because I got to work with my kids for once and you know just sort of flex my muscles a little bit uh, creatively there um, and yeah so you can see those on YouTube they're called Scaredy Cats but uh, I also had a feature film that I was supposed to start shooting in May and we had to delay it because of COVID and so the, the extra time has given me some some more time to polish the script and everything and now we're we're going to camera in October so it's coming up pretty fast like six weeks i think we're on we're on set so just um getting you know getting into uh just getting the a chance to have some time some downtime to really kind of focus on the script and improve it uh has been you know it's been great it's been one positive thing out of all this excellent and, and one more thing to wrap up uh because uh because I'm, I, I wasn't quite sure if your kid actually did have imaginary friend but if, you, if your kid did actually have one would you would you try to discourage 
Uh, I think now I would, but I, I mean, we, we definitely had a, uh, an experience with something. No, it wasn't imaginary friend, but it was something that he thought he was seeing. And, and we, we talked about this and this was actually well before Z, but, uh, my oldest son came into our bedroom one night and just said, uh, I'm scared of the girl with the green eyes in my closet. And I mean, that's, while it wasn't totally inspirational in the creation of Z, we, it's definitely one of those things that you can draw upon being like, if that were the case, what the hell do you do? <laughs> you know, like, how are you, if I can't see something, but he can, how am I supposed to help you? You know, if, if you can talk to him and I can't, how am I supposed to reason with you? Um, and a lot of those ideas made their way into Z where it's just like, if you're, if my parenting is getting uh, superseded by this thing that's telling you to do something else, I don't know how to fight this. And so that's, that was definitely influential with Z. <laughs> well, it, it, it sounds like uh, your, your, your son has a future career in, uh, in, in writing Supernatural, hopefully. <laughs> Probably, hopefully. That'd be great. <laughs> well, hey, Brandon, hey, thank you uh, for uh, speaking with me. It's, it's a pleasure. Hopefully we get to do this again in, on, your, on your next project. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Thanks, man. See ya.